What's up everyone, welcome back to another What If video. It's been a while since I covered this one, but last time, we left off with the Saiyans finally facing off against Frieza. After luring him to the planet that they found, they successfully were able to eliminate his army and now plan to coordinate an attack on him. However, things turn sour quickly as Frieza ends up showing off his true power, which becomes too much for the Saiyans to handle. Frieza transformed, and even with the great apes and wrathful Saiyans, the Saiyan rebels couldn't do anything to stop the tyrant. With Frieza getting bored in the fight, he sets his sights on some potential prey to kill first, in order to make an impression on those he's fighting. Let's pick up from here. I ended off with a rather grim poll asking you guys who Frieza would decide to kill out of the weaker Saiyans. The options were Tarbal, Paragus, and Gine, but the winner was the fourth option, all of the above. Frieza's gonna slaughter everyone anyways, and since these three didn't do much, he'll reward them with a quick death. He quickly knocks the Saiyans out of the way, as they watch Frieza rush towards the bystanders. To show everyone what happens when they mess with Lord Frieza, he quickly lunges over to those three who were with Gohan and Piccolo, and he knocks Gohan and Piccolo out of the way with tremendous power, sending them flying in the opposite direction. The Namekian may still be useful, and as for the child, he wants to set an impression on him, so they'll both live for now. As quickly as he gets over there, it ends. Frieza shoots three death beams at the three weaker Saiyans, and they're all helpless to defend against it. They fall to the ground, only to die soon after. The speed and power of this attack was simply too much to handle. Everyone watches in horror. Nappa, Shalit, Giblet, and Turles are speechless, and angered by what they've seen. But this pales in comparison to the other four Saiyans with them. Goku, Raditz, Vegeta, and Broly witness it as well. And when Frieza turns back to see these four, his smug grin turns to a look of shock as he feels their powers rising. They're not even in that crazy hair, yellow eye form that he saw them using before. They've completely dropped out of their wrathful form into base, but they're obviously not going to stay in base for long. Almost in perfect unison, the four of them all power up and scream in rage, watching their family members slaughtered, with Goku and Raditz especially pissed off by seeing Gohan and Piccolo hurt as well, nowhere to be seen. Remember, in this scenario, everyone's known each other for at least a year, with the original Saiyan group being very tightly knit and actually having a sense of family with their blood relatives, unlike how Saiyans are in the original story. I mean, that is the whole purpose of this what if, they're good now. They all explode with anger, and the four of them glow with their auras turning into massive flames. They now have all become Super Saiyans, and some of you are probably worried about Broly being a Super Saiyan knowing how reckless he is. But in this timeline, Broly isn't a loose cannon because he had so much training in his life prior to this, unlike he did in the original story, and he's learned to control his rage somewhat, which is why he was even able to control Wrathful in the first place. He's the most powerful of the four right now, but he isn't completely berserk. He is royally pissed though. Now, let's get to a brief look at everyone's powers. There's no need to cover everyone's power levels, only the four Saiyans and Frieza. Raditz is at 350k, or 17.5 million in Super Saiyan. Vegeta's at 450k, which translates to 22.5 million in Super Saiyan. Goku's at 460,000, which goes to 23 million in Super Saiyan, and Broly's the biggest at 750,000, which skyrockets to 37.5 million in Super Saiyan. Together, they have reached a total of 100.5 million. And Frieza's obviously at the same power as he is in the original, 60 million at 50%, and 120 million at 100%. Obviously, half his power isn't going to cut it anymore. He needs to go full power. The Emperor is astonished. He sees not one, but four of those Super Saiyans that he's heard of in Legends. He's now a little nervous. Frieza is rushed by the four Saiyans at once, and is beaten to a pulp. He doesn't go full power right away, and he's only at about half his maximum power right now, and he got caught off guard. The Tyrant is eventually able to break free and power up to his full power, which is greater than that of the Saiyans combined, but not by much. The battle is fierce but somewhat even, and Frieza begins to get a slight advantage again. Frieza is losing ki as they battle, but so are those Saiyans. Everyone involved in the fight is pretty injured, and no one, not even Frieza, knows how to control the forms they're using right now, at least not efficiently. As this is all going on, the other four Saiyans, Nappa, Turles, Shalit, and Giblet, are equally amazed to see what these guys are capable of right now. Since they can't contribute at the moment, the four of them decide to check if Piccolo and Gohan are okay. They do end up finding the two of them, who are injured, but still safe at least. The two were knocked unconscious for a brief while, and don't know what happened over the last few minutes, but they can sense the dramatic change in key. They regroup back near the fight, as they watch from a distance. Piccolo wishes he could help, as do the other Saiyans, but they just get in the way at this point. 
they watch as the other Saiyans lose ground, with Frieza barely being more powerful than them combined. They're all getting enraged watching Frieza beat up the other Saiyans, especially Gohan watching Goku and Raditz get hurt, and Turles watching his best friend Raditz fighting. That's when Piccolo and Gohan realize something. They're missing some people. Tarbol, Gine, and Paragus are nowhere to be found. They're not with the group. Gohan asks the other four what happened, and they don't know what to say, and just give each other some serious looks. In a somber but determined tone, Turles ends up breaking the news to Gohan and Piccolo, telling them that they'll make Frieza pay for it no matter what. While he wasn't very close with Paragus and Tarbol, hearing that two innocent people died angers both of them greatly, but what really gets to Gohan is hearing about Gine, his grandmother. The fight between the four Super Saiyans and Frieza rages on, with Frieza getting angrier as it goes on, and everyone running out of energy. Each side needs to finish the fight now. Out of nowhere, what seems like a missile hits Frieza. The four Super Saiyans are confused, thinking that someone shot a large key blast at Frieza, but how is it strong enough to catch Frieza off guard like that? Even if it was all the other Saiyans together, they wouldn't really be doing much to him. Then they begin to realize, that missile wasn't a missile or a key blast. It was a kid. It was Gohan. Gohan has joined the fight with the four Super Saiyans. Well, actually, now there's five. They didn't even notice during the battle, but after hearing about Gine's death, watching his father and uncle on the brink of death, and seeing all his friends being in danger, Gohan got one of those unbelievable rage moments that we saw when he was a kid. We saw this in the Saiyan and Frieza saga in the original story, and it's never really happened in this scenario, so all that built up anger was released and Gohan actually became a Super Saiyan, although he can't really control it right now because he's basically berserk. Well, not like Broly berserk, I mean just he's really really angry. While the other four Saiyans are kinda in control of their power, Gohan obviously isn't. He's still a kid at this point, and he's basically blinded by the rage right now. Given his huge potential and massive rage boost, and how connected he was with Gine, hearing about her death combined with the other factors I mentioned was able to push him to transform as well. Gohan is now at a power level of 300k due to a rage boost of his, and with Super Saiyan, he's reached 15 million. Combined, the power of the five Super Saiyans is now nearly on par with Frieza, and Frieza is losing more and more ki by the minute while using his full power, while the Saiyans are faring much better in their new form despite losing some power as it goes on. Seeing a new member with them, and the fact that they want to protect him in case he does anything stupid, the Saiyans all get back into the fight motivated once again to defeat Frieza. Frieza is losing more ki by the minute while using his full power. And now that they have an extra person fighting, the Saiyans are now advantaged, and they're able to back Frieza into a corner. Together, they toss him back and forth like some sick game of Frieza volleyball or something. Finally, Frieza is launched into the air by one of them, and Vegeta commands everyone to fire now, using their full power. The five Super Saiyans, the four Base Saiyans, and Piccolo all fire towards Frieza as he's launched up into the atmosphere. The team's combined power kills Frieza for good this time. It's finally over. Everyone powers back down, and the mood is bittersweet, with Gohan actually going completely unconscious. They're all at least happy that the plan kind of worked, but they've got some other issues right now. Firstly, three of their members died. Well, that's not really a problem. Goku reminds everyone about the Dragon Balls. They just need to head back to Earth. The only issue though is that there's a lot of people here, and they have nowhere else to live. The planet they live on sucks, and this barren planet they're on right now is even worse. They'll all live on Earth for now, and they can all figure out a living situation once they arrive there. With the ship Goku and his crew arrived on, as well as a few smaller ones in tow, everyone begins their journey to Earth in order to revive their group. Goku, Gohan, and Piccolo need to get back anyways. With the round trip and the time spent on the planet, the three of them have been gone for about two years, so Goku and Gohan have a lot of explaining and catching up to do with Chi-Chi. They arrive on Earth safely, with everyone happy, but also kinda weirded out by the several other people that just arrived. And also the fact that Piccolo's there, and he doesn't seem like a bad guy anymore. Like I said, a lot of explaining is needed for the other Z-Fighters. They don't know who these guys are, and they don't know what happened in these past two years with this entire group. And it's weird to see Piccolo now not acting like that demon that wanted to take over the world a few years back. All might seem fine right now, but there's other threats lurking around. It's great that they all defeated Frieza, but he wasn't their only enemy. Sure, they took out a lot of members of the Frieza Force and Frieza himself, but there's someone more threatening that might show up in the future. King Cold has been waiting in space, and he hasn't heard from his son in a few days, nor has he heard from any of the forces that were with Frieza. He knows that Frieza went to some planet where the Saiyans were, and if you remember in the last part, a jammer was created to interfere with any scouter signals on the planet, and it was made to seem like the planet had no outside connections, even though that was a man-made thing. 
King Cold knew this when Frieza went into the planet, so he thought it was normal to not hear from Frieza for a few hours or so. But a few days? It couldn't have taken that long to collect the Dragon Balls. And there's no way the Saiyans could have done anything to Frieza. They're too weak, right? King Cold's starting to have his doubts, and he's beginning to think that this planet might have been a trap for Frieza. He realizes that the fact that scatters don't work on that planet for some reason is a little bit too suspicious. And while the Frieza Force was told it was because of the planet itself, King Cold's beginning to realize that it might actually be something else. Just to ease his anxiety, he decides that he and some forces should head out to that planet and check out what's happening, just to check up on Frieza to see if everything's going okay. He should be fine, there's no way the Saiyans could have done anything to him. He could just be taking a long time to find the Dragon Balls, right? The King's getting a little more uneasy by the minute, so now he heads out for that planet to actually see what's going on. And he arrives with his forces to find the planet completely empty. There's craters and destruction everywhere, and there's no ships to be found either from the Frieza Force or from the Saiyans. Keep in mind, this is happening only a few days after the Saiyans departed from this planet back to Earth. So all of the destruction is still pretty fresh here. King Cold is beginning to realize what happened, and he's not happy one bit about it. And while King Cold might come into the picture, there's still some hope around the corner for their future endeavors. Soon enough, they'll meet a new ally as well, a sword-wielding teenage boy from the future. But I'll have to save that for the next part. So, what did you guys think of this part? What do you think will happen next now that Frieza is dead? What will happen with everyone now on Earth? Will they be able to revive Gine, Paragus, and Tarbal? Leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. And as always, remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for notifications about future parts of this what if and any other videos of mine. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.